my goal at the end is to become a waterman because uh, it's uh, more than you know a job or something. It's uh, just a lifestyle of chasing the natural elements. When it's like uh, 40 knots, uh, big waves, uh, strong wind, uh, and I'm just there, it's like uh, I know that's my place. I feel uh, at home, you know. Italy's Lorenzo Cassati. If I didn't have my dad, I don't know what I was doing right now, you know. Without my dad and uh, also my brother, I would not be where I am right now. Uh, I am Renato, I'm the father of Lorenzo and Leo, and I'm here to, to help them for the court. It motivates me if I see that I'm kiting more than other people in the water. Yeah, to see everyone is already going away and you're still there, like training and having fun while everyone is uh, already tired. Lorenzo also, we did ask, is he going to perform to the same level as what he did being on, on, on new kites, new brand this year? I was not sure if I was coming ready for King of the Air. Incredible what you've done. I mean, a lot of people said that, you know, you would be ready. It's an intense story. Three months before the event, we started the first test session. The final of the Kota 2023 was nerve-wracking. What a riding here from Lorenzo Cassati. Technically, he's got everything there. He's got the double, he's got the board off, double back roll. This is really impressive stuff. What an epic action here during the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. Renzo, vieni a prendere Bau. Io mi trovo più comodo con Renzo così, ho messo avanti. Ah, non si va sopra, no, sopra. There has been one day in which I have understood that Lorenzo had the passion for the ocean and the sea. I bring at Lorenzo for the first time in his life to make surf. It was like my first day I was cast on waves and I like stood up on the board. The best thing was to happen when we exit in the water. That was quite late. It was in the dark. As soon as we gone out, he looked at me. Dad, which time tomorrow morning we have sunrise? And I said, I think 6.30, but why? I want to be here again. In that moment, her father understood he had something special for the ocean and the waves. When I was really young, he brought me with me on his board. Between the legs, he was kiting and I was standing there. When I grew a little bit more, he started doing some practice on the beach and uh, started to get a little bit more into kiting, but still I was not kiting in the water or liking it. I saw Jeremy and he was like my same age. I was 11 and he was 11. In my mind made a difference. Like if we can do it, I can do it as well. Because before I saw my dad and uh, there were guys, but they were all like kind of old. I thought it was a thing for more old people and I didn't want to do it so much. And after I saw Jeremy and I started doing more, 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 more. As soon as they finished the school, they were the first one entering the water and quite always the last one to leave the water. As soon as there was wind, I was just kiting and trying to learn new tricks. And then I did my first competition, Junior World Championship. I think I was like 14 or 13. This has been really a period in which it was like three years that they were watching TV and in TV, they were playing the old edition of Kota. If you ask Lorenzo uh, all the names of the previous hits, uh, which were the tricks of uh, edition 2020, of uh, Jesse Richman, let's, they know everything. That's why also for Lorenzo is very important, Kota, and it's like a dream. If I didn't have my dad, I don't know what I was doing right now, you know. My dad always be like my teacher. He's uh, helping me with everything with the kite world and what to do with the kite, but also outside of the kite, like in life. 
I think he really made a great job and I couldn't have asked for a better dad, you know? So he's just the uh, most important person for me in this hurt. Sometimes we don't even need to talk. We look each one in the eyes and we have already both understood everything. We are living uh, together and uh, share the same passion for kite surfing, but doing a lot of things together and to grow, I think it really helped uh, to be close and uh, yeah, to stay together. This team belongs together and that not only one rider makes the difference, but that this whole family, the team will make the difference. One of the things is that they are brothers. This means a lot. So a lot of times they make the, the training really like a game for them. They also have uh, an objective to be in the quota podium, but the small daily goal is to be better than the brother. One of the secrets of our family is that we are joined and we work together and we are a small team. Everyone gives his contributes in his team. It's just nice to help him. If I train with my brother, sometimes then he will help me, you know, in some tricks. He gives me tips to do it better. So when I can, I help him. That was new for us to not only have one athlete that is pushing for the big goals, but that there is a family, a complete team. Renato, I think it's uh, some months, he's already nervous for everything, but I'm more uh, relaxed. Excellent opportunity for all of you to understand what the judges are looking for, what scores well, what doesn't score well, um, and, and to give you a good idea how to kind of plan and uh, activate your heats to deliver a successful journey through the competition. It's really, really good. The future is about tuning those guys to get short line lists on your lines. In a part it's not easy, but uh, it's what I love and I always try to have uh, an equilibrium between uh, being a father and being uh, a coach. We work a lot in, uh, at home in Canary Island to plan uh, the way of uh, training and uh, with some uh, slow motion every day together. I take care of them uh, with the camera. The dedication in preparing that starts from the diet, from the gym, from the training itself, how they see what the material needs to do to be able to fulfill his tricks. I've never seen that in the kitesurf industry before. I think we are probably one of the more professional ones. In the sports, unfortunately, it doesn't turn so much money like other sports. So to be professional in the sport, maybe it's always been like an option and not like an obligation. If you don't train with the right uh, mind and with the right uh, strategy, you can maybe train even harder, but then you're going to achieve less. You know, you have to train hard, but also train intelligent. Everything is planned and it's not boring. It's something that can be adapted, but we have a precise direction in which always push and go and work. And also this can change by what the judges require or seen or what the competitors are pushing. For sure in training, sometimes I'm trying new stuff and crushing a lot, but uh, I'm also doing a lot of training that I can do already because then they are probably the one that I'm going to do in competition and have them really steady. The trick that I do in competition at the end are trick that I'm really doing a lot of time and have them really confidently, so it's not a uh, yeah, crash.
When Lorenzo said Harlem, everyone said, who? I have to be honest, the first time Alex contacted me, I never heard that Harlem in my life. I knew Harlem, but uh, I, I was not sure, you know, I didn't know the uh, the new kite. I never thought they could have a good kite for me, you know. I always saw the kite and I was like, yeah, it's okay, but uh, I can't win a competition or I'm good with this kite. Alex called me, then he said to me, we are Harlem and we have the right kite to win the quota. <laughs> and of course I thought, uh, oh man, <laughs> one of the many that <laughs> try to sell smokes, you know. <laughs> we were with three people on the beach and uh, Lorenzo was uh, as cool as he always is. Victor and me were a little bit uh, nervous. He went out on the six meter and I think the second or third jump he made was uh, straight away a double loop. He came back uh, with a kind of smile on his face. Yeah, I like this guy. When I call my dad and uh, I tell him, uh, yeah, maybe we can join Arlem. From the tone of his voice, I already perceived that that was what he was searching for. Yes, good. E? Hanno lanciato la porta. Bene. Siamo pronti? Sì. Sì. No, no, è mezzo, no, è quindi rispetto a 8 e mezzo, 8 e mezzo, 9. E quindi alla fine ho messo su un punto e mezzo in più. Il numero 1 a questo punto e mezzo ci ritroviamo e da che parte rispetto a uno che ha chiuso 9 trick e di cui comunque quasi tutti abbastanza poi tecnicamente capito. A lot of people maybe didn't thought I was going to be ready or even didn't know if the kite was going to work, but uh, I've been through a lot of uncertainty in you know, all the first on the period that was without sponsor because I didn't know what to do. He was in a really difficult month because he missed the Red Bull Mega Loop and the full power tarifa. I was not sure if I was coming ready for King of the Air. It's an intense story. You have to imagine like we started with Lorenzo in September. So that is three months before the event, we started the first test session and then it was not even sure if he wants to go with Harlem. So that day in which Lorenzo tried, I was like already in a small tension because we were really starting to be near the quota period and was missing time. I always had the, the, my mind that I could make it, but also a lot of time I, I was like maybe, I don't know if in King of Hair I can do good or I can do bad. It's not the same thing as training all the year with the same kite, but still in that six weeks. I trained as hard as I could, uh, trying uh, every setting, everything to just come ready for King of the Air. So for sure I was in a bit of a rush and not uh, the best way, but at the end I think I made it work. If you always know your kite is going to catch you and uh, you feel safe on the kite, then you're going to push more. And uh, that's the part that also helped me arrive more ready at King of the Air, that I could trust the kites. Boy, still sleeping. Lorenzo was awake in now, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's strange, Lorenzo usually sleeps until very late. And of course, today it's a little, it's a little bit more exciting. Uh, you have to look at the, the table clock. Yeah. So wow. full on, huh? Yeah. Uh, it looks promising, eh? It's uh, three hours, four hours before the start event. I visualize everything since the moment we go down in the beach and we prepare and pump the kite and we check the stream and the pressure of the kite and the first uh, lunch and the first trip Lorenzo is doing in training, uh, deciding which are the strategies for his hit, uh, looking the other hits before Lorenzo, what the judges want to see, the continuous process. So. 300 thoughts in your mind uh, per second. 
Good afternoon and a warm and windy welcome to all of you from around the globe to the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air, the 11th King of the Air since this incredible event found its way back into the world of kiteboarding. Lorenzo is the coolest horse in the circus. I never saw Lorenzo nervous in any way. I think it's, uh, it's good because maybe sometimes someone has too much pressure, is too much uh, stress before competition, and uh, I don't think it's uh, good for your health. I mean, I'm, no, I'm never under tension if I'm not competing, you know, I'm always, also if I'm kiting, I'm okay, I'm not stressed because at the end it's uh, what I do to have fun, so it's not, I'm not going to be stressed. He's one of these riders that have nerve of steels, that are very focused. At the moment, uh, you need to count on him. So I only know a few people in the industry that can have with uh, this age of 18 years, that strong focus. You'll be watching Lorenzo Cassati defending his title. In the moment of the, the competition, everything must be ready. You have to compete in five minutes, but that five minutes is the result of one year of works with a lot of sacrifices, with so many hours. And this King of the Air and also the one of uh, last year, my dad was helping me for everything, strategies, and Leo is uh, more helping me now with, uh, you know, kite change, preparing the gear, uh, everything, and make sure it's uh, ready. That was okay almost all day, you know. This is Casati, last year's champion. Opening up his first trick against Timo Bursama and Steinmüll. During the competition, we have this uh, special connection in which quite on each trick, we are in contact and we decide on the flight together which is the best uh, strategies in that moment. in the water at the end. I was uh, just doing my tricks that I know I could do and uh, having fun, for sure. It's not the same as you go with training because you're in competition and it's different, but I was, uh, you know, okay. And then when I started to land all my tricks, I was uh, super, feeling super good, really confident and, uh, you know, just uh, riding really good. Lorenzo. Wow. With the laid off kick it there, but oh, just a very casual. Ward off, mega lift it. There, but Lorenzo Casati responding with a, what looked like a double board flip there. He's got a wave underneath him. What a landing. Oh, what negotiating of the landing there. Oh, and on the buzzer, Lorenzo Casati decides to jump, going in as well. These riders will try and get some training in, but realistically, they're not going to have time. The next time we see good wind here, we'll be running the quarterfinals. How do you feel that uh, Lorenzo is doing on his new gear? I feel like he's doing very well. I think he obviously hasn't had that much time to prepare. Yeah, but that was fucking, I was really under the power of that. We can't do it, we have to eat. Imagine if it was good. So, uh, under, under power. Yeah. Just was under power. Yeah. Before when I was up there, I was quite way bigger. I was just say it's becoming more and more technical as well. The guys are really narrowing down the margins of the board size, kite size, bridles on the kite, kite dimensions, kite profile. So the guys this year are really talking a lot of anticipation for how the equipment and the evolution of the equipment in the coming years is just going to push the sport to a whole new level. With Harlem Liu and the uh, Apple Tree. I think it feels more than, you know, just, uh, it's just your sponsor. I think it feels like a family. The human side, they're really open to everything. They, we go together to eat, uh, we, we speak, we have fun. You know, it's uh, something uh, more than just uh, they sponsor you. It's something that you, you share moments and emotion with them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Lord Lorenzo. I'm 
board out of the cupcake. You have your yeah. wish? Yeah. Ready? I keep go. it for myself, right? <laughs> yeah, and don't tell us. Don't yeah. tell us. <laughs> Sometimes I had the impression that not all the brands had understood this kind of approach. They should take this experience like we are a small team family, working together with the brand. So there should be in my mind not so much difference from our small family and the big, bigger family of the brand. The common union between these three brands has been the idea on behind everything that is to collaborate with the kids, to create something together. Good afternoon, all of you from around the world to the beautiful city of Cape Town for day two of the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. We are coming to you live from the city of Cape Town, Kite Beach, the kite surfing mecca of the world. Heat number 18, the rider that has the most appearance here. 10 consecutive appearances, Aaron Hadlow up against Lorenzo Casati. Both of them know what it takes to win the Red Bull King of the Air. So this could be very, very interesting. We could see 20 years of kiteboarding experience unleashed here on this heat, and will Lorenzo have an answer? They're both riders taking off at the same time. What do you think, lad? Well, I mean, Lorenzo is defending his title. He just had a major uh, sponsor change. He's on some new gear with the Harlem Kite. Straight into another move. Lots of height. Wind's picked up here. Straight into a back hole mega loop. Multiple rotations. That's three for me. I think Understand. he's changing kite. He might be getting into a doubles here. Yes, he is. Kite chain. Aaron Hadlow, the five-time world champion, is heading out towards Robben Island. He throws down the accelerator, pops off a shallow kicker. Front rotation, contra loop, board off. With another front rotation on the way down, that's going to do good. Lorenzo. Wow. Double from uh, Lorenzo Cassati. Magnifico. They dropped the scores. Uh, Aaron Hadler will no longer be competing, but what a heat from both of these riders. Casati's tactics were spot on. It was incredible. Jamie Overbeck, Lorenzo Casati, first place and second place finisher from last year's King of the Air. Unfortunate that one of these gents will be going home after this. goes the buzzer for the last semi-final. Coming out of the gate with a six. Hoping he's uh, got enough height. Oh, but as we see, Whoa. with probably the sickest S loop we've seen at the King of the Year, Lorenzo Cassati. Jamie reaching for the skies. Look at that shot. Double front roll, board off. Oh, it's, it, right? it's incredible. Bella, bella, bella. Magnifico. As we see, Jamie, a delayed takeoff on the ramp. Double back rotation. Not a lot of height. Tornado. Mega loop on the way down. Here we go. Kasati. Oh, with a double. A nice double. Back roll board off. We have a full Italian final. Lorenzo Kasati will be joining Andrea Principi and Jeremy Berlando. And what, these are all friends, you know? I think it was always, you know, like a dream to all three be together in the final. The final of Dakota 2023 was nerve wracking. It was the most epic final I've ever seen on the King of the Air here in Cape Town. First thing I maybe felt a little bit was the lead. The wind was a little bit lighter in the final, and that's uh, for me that I'm quite heavy. Maybe a little bit of a problem. When the wind is not strong and you are small, then you don't go the same high. But still, like I, I went uh, into the heat, like you know, for sand. And there we go, Casati again with a double mega loop board up and a front rotation edit there on the way down. <laughs> Heading out, he spots a kicker, lifts his cut up. Right. 
That's no. He's even more aggressive than the one before. He had more height on this one. But we're seeing incredible scores. Kasati. Wow. Oh, boogie, double boogie loop. Board off. Does he stick it? This could score big. And the board spin, I think, as well. Remember, yeah. we've seen tricks we've never seen Landy before. But what a riding here from Lorenzo Kasati. Here's Andrea Prinsky, also got a nice kicker. Taking off. Contra loop. Win a double contra loop. And can he stick it this time? Yes, he can! I know I was behind, like Renato told me hey, to do something good because you're behind Andrea, and I thought that it was Negro. No, 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 he didn't just try that. He didn't just try that. He didn't just try that. One more meter, and uh, you know, was for me really different, I think. But still, you know, I'm happy that I had the confidence uh, with the Kai to, to try. Double, Double back roll. Double back roll. Double, back board roll off. Board off. <laughs> Double mega loop. What a landing then yes. from Lorenzo. So I kind of know in my mind that I've lost. I got second and for sure I was, you know, a bit disappointed. But uh, sometimes it's part of the game and you can do nothing, you know, you can just uh, take it as a lesson and uh, improve for the next year, for the next uh, competition and take the example and, yeah, become better. With that win, I gave my 100% and even did things I maybe was not expecting to do, you know. In Italy we said, when you have already the belly full of food, you don't need any more necessity to eat. It will help us in progressing uh, and uh, going better for the next events. He didn't got that much time to train. It's still good that he got second in the King of the Air. Winning move, a double cut loop, double back roll, board off. Italy's Lorenzo Cassati. I wish to, to have a revenge. There are a lot of lessons that uh, we realized. We have seen that the direction we have taken one year ago, it was good. Still, we have to try to be always ready to what the judge wants to see and wants to score. The, the part of the equipment will be in a good part, determining also to get some results. We are working hard now with uh, Brainchild and Harlem to create something that can be more useful for Lorenzo. I'm really, really looking forward to show the world uh, what the family can do. I'm pretty sure if there are five knots more compared to this year in the finals, uh, everybody has to sit tight then for Lorenzo. So I think we can really work together as a family to, to do something new. In the coming months, we will intensively prototype uh, with Lorenzo on new models. With the, with the right feedback from me and with the right work from uh, the company, I think we can take it for the next level. In January, we start training really more than ever before, like even harder. Uh, Gene, Kite, everything ready for the next season. Next year, I want to try to take that first place. My goal at the end is to become a waterman because uh, I also want to have like bigger goals. So I want to try to be the first one to become world champion in bigger strapless and wave riding. I want to be, you know, like as complete as possible. And that's my goal to be the first to win all the three different speciality. The best, you know, on the same year. That's uh, my end goal, like win, uh, be world champion in strapless and wave riding, be world champion in bigger, and then also win King of the Air the same year. I want to try to inspire more people to spend as much time as possible on the water and doing uh, what they like to do. Yeah, stay with the elements. But it's a lifestyle, you know, to live uh, the day wanted to go on the water and uh, looking for the condition every day to, to stay at the end on the water, looking the forecast, see where there is wind, uh, travel, search the wind, search the wave. Knowing my son, I am quite sure. 
he will arrive far. He dreamed to leave a sign in the kite surf history. And my role of father is just to suggest him, to give him uh, the wing to fly, and he has to fly. You spend all your days to, to work, and you realize that you have lost uh, probably the best part of your life. That for me it was watching uh, growing my son and trying to, to give them a uh, hand in this journey and this process until uh, they have uh, the capacity to fly alone. I mean, <laughs> and this is probably the best uh, part of my life. Yeah, so Leon, yeah, I think now he's uh, starting to, you know, becoming better at kiting. And he's like, he's 14. And like, I remember when I was 14, I was doing nothing of what he's doing. We're gonna have for sure one day a final together. It will be a close final, and I will beat him. There will be for sure a moment in which, little by little, our connection will uh, take another direction. So still, I will be there uh, with uh, less importance, uh, but always with the same love uh, I had always had for them since they were. Yeah, I want to thank my dad for everything that he had done to me from uh, since the beginning and still doing and will do in the future. Really love him. <laughs>